Um, uh, yeah, so we can start now. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about image segmentation and um, specifically focus on YOLO 7. Um, and so we're going to be talking about image segmentation with YOLO 7. Um, right, so what is image segmentation, right? Um, so image segmentation, it's just the process of partitioning a specific image into um, multiple image segments or um, various image regions or image objects. And um, it is goal it is, is to simplify or change the representation of um, that image into um, something that is more meaningful. Um, yeah, and there are um, different um, implementations and different actual terms um, in computer vision that people use. Um, but this this right here is um, my favorite. Um, my favorite um, use of specific terms that uh, people use and throw around um, in either um, in, in in image segmentation process, right? Um, so as you can see from the image, um, as you can see from the slide here, um, and a specific classification um, in a solo classification problem, it is to usually just take the entire image itself and just classify it um, as a single entity, right? So if there was this simple picture of a sheep, um, it would take that image and classify it into um, the class of sheep, and if maybe another um, another image was uh, just the picture of a person was there, um, it would take that and classify that as a person, right? Um, and but when that localization process is added, it adds this bounding box and um, adds this specific coordinates of our image um, where the where uh, that specific group is actually located and so that's why we have this classification and localization um another term is object detection where we are detecting specific objects or specific entities um in our image right um yeah and going to another term semantic segmentation um is actually segmenting the image um, semantically. Again, this allows um, a pixel by pixel definition of the specific entities um, that exist in our image, but um, of the specific classes that, that exist in our image, right? But there is this still generalization that we had um, on our initial process of classification and or classification and localization, where we have um, generalized classes um, in our segmentation process, right? So we have the road, we have the sheep class, and we have the grass. And so there is that, um, there is, we have that pixel based um, segmentation, um, but it is, we still have that generalization. And based on our needs, this might be um, the type of segmentation that we want. And um, another type of segmentation is instance segmentation, um, where we are actually um, have that pixel-based classification for each um, instance or for each entity that exists in our image. Um, yeah, so looking at um, object detection and how, um, and, uh, how a usual um, neural network architecture works um, is um, an image is just uh, is just uh, is just a number, right? It's just a collection of pixels which are um, just specific values, which may be um, an RGB value if it's a color image, or um, simply a zero and one if it's a grayscale or a black and white image. Um, and so in this um, object, in the object detection use case in the first image 
scenario, what we saw was we would have um, this specific image. Um, it would be a supervised. Um, it would be a supervised learning process where we would have this. We'd have this dog image, um, and when we're going through the training process. Um, or when we're going through the labeling process, right? We would draw this bounding box, um, selecting the uh, pixels where the dog actually resides, right? Um, and so that and and so that area um, could then be um, the specific x y coordinates of the dog's location, right? So if for example, we were to see that um, the dog starts off at um, at forty percent um, into the x-axis and um, ten percent down from the y-axis, uh, and we were to draw a box, those specific coordinates would would then be um, the labels to the image, right? And if we had multiple classes, for example, um, let's say we were trying to build a classification model that would classify between um, between a dog and a human, um, but uh, or a dog and a cat, um, but it wouldn't it would it was it wouldn't just be a normal classification image, but it would be. Um, an object detection also where it would um, draw a bounding box over on the dog or the specific cat. We would just have those coordinates that would have the location um, just like this, um, a dog at, in this case, yeah, yeah, just, just like this. You can think of this as um, the same process that we do when we, um, are creating the label for the image. Um, we would draw the box and we would have the box have um, those four points um, or the X and Y value or the start and the height and the width of the box. Um, and we would have an additional value or an additional vector, uh, an additional number that would um, represent what this animal was right so if we we're building an animal classification model so we would have um, a vector of five values um, that would act as the label um, for our single image um, in the process of training and um, in the process of classification our model when we give a new data that we're trying to predict um, would give us this um, those coordinates and um, actually give us um, give us the location for um, the new animals we put into our model, right? Um, and so this this case that we saw here is this initial this first uh, this first case, but uh, was just in in this scenario was just a single sheet, right? Um, yeah, but we might we might have um, multiple entities and uh, multiple entities that we want to recognize, right? So our object detection model might might want to our use case might actually want to recognize um, different entities in a single picture. Um, which in this case wouldn't do right because um, we only have um, we only have five points and a single um, a single a single bounding box that is actually that is actually covering our that is actually containing the dog right so if we had multiple dogs we would have to increase this number of features because um, each dog would then have which would then need to have um would then need to have its own bounding box right and if we didn't know how many how many entities actually existed in the picture um for example um we might be trying to actually just uh, predict uh, um, figure out what what entity exists for a single for a single entity or this might be like multiple dogs, right? It can it can be any number of dogs, and if we do not know that, um, our 
initial model, we can make it like um, a really large input, but at, at the end of the day, it would still be limited. Um, and we would have all that cumbersome, um, all those cumbersome neurons that would actually not be doing anything if we had um, a very small input or it may be just a single input, a, a single image um, as an input we, with where we were trying to recognize. So that might be the case. Um, yeah, so if we were trying to draw those bounding boxes on um, and trying to recognize um, those uh, multiple entities in this image, um, just like in this case that we see, um, where we have uh, multiple cars, um, one here, one here, and another one here. Um, what we could do is we could um, we could divide the initial image into multiple into multiple images, right? Um, so instead of just having a single image like we do here, um, we would divide it into any into any number of um, into any number of grids, um, and each grid which would then go on to have um, would then go on, go on to have its own entity, right? Um, and multiple entities can overlap. Um, usually, if we if our division is quite small. Um, we really reduce the chance of um, that collision happening, but we then go on to um, uh, we then go on to handle those overlappings um, using um, different methods. Um, yeah, so, but let's just go on onto YOLO. Um, yeah, so there had been really um, lots of attempts um, on. Um, object detection, which were really good, but YOLO has really um, surpassed them um, since its initial creation on in 2015. Um, yeah, and YOLO has had improved accuracy and reduced latency over um, the multiple versions that have been coming out throughout the years. Um, yeah, and accuracy is a profit and latency is a cost uh, when it comes to any computer vision tasks, right? And so um, as accuracy increases, there are less accidents and um, more work is done correctly with better quality. Um, and um, the lower the latency there is as well um, in any computer vision task, the faster things are done, which is always a good thing, right? Um, yeah, and so this is the performance of YOLO 7 compared to uh other models um which we will get to see uh when we go to the github and so yeah let's get right to the implementation um yeah so if we can go to this uh yellow version 7 implementation um, on GitHub, which we are going to be using for this demo. Um, yeah, so everyone could, should have connected. Um, let's make a blue tutorial. Uh, okay. So I hope everyone has access has gotten access to the EC2 instances. Um, yeah. And let's make this as interactive as possible. Uh, yeah, so just like always, let's um, create our virtual environment. Um, I believe everyone has similar Python versions. I'm, I'm on Python version 3.9.12. Um, yeah. And let's 
go on and clone the repository. So um, we can't pip install um, YOLO, and so we have to actually clone this repository um, to actually use it, right? Uh, so. Let's create yellow version seven. Um, yeah. And so we have it, and we have specific requirements that are required um, to actually run it, right? Um, which you'll find in the requirements.txt folder. Um, so it requires PyTorch, um, specific versions of PyTorch. It requires TensorFlow, Pandas, Seaborn, and um, couple of other libraries like matplotlib and numpy. So let's go on and install that. So let's keep this open. And so the main file um, from that YOLO 7 directory, um, which we're going to be using for um, our object. I, have, I haven't executed the environment. OK. Uh, so get to Let's, let's call it here. Yeah. So the main um, the main file which is going to be um, doing our object detection is um, this detect.py um, file that is provided, right? Um, and so this handles the entire um, entire object detection uh, detection part of um, this YOLO implementation. Um, yeah. And if you go down to the arguments file, it takes in a lot. It takes in lots of arguments. But what we're going to be dealing with is um, this specific source um, source and this uh, this weights argument, right? And so there is this default already provided, which takes in the yellow version seven um, weights. So we're not going to be um, Training any any model at the moment because we do not have um, any labeled data. So we're just going to be using pre-trained weights uh, that are already provided uh, by this specific model. Uh, and once we go into the once we go into the implementation, we will talk more about the data that was uh, that will be process right so let's just upgrade pip um yeah so if we go back into the yellow version 7 of the github folder um we have yeah we're going to be skipping the testing the training and also the the transfer learning part right and so we can just skip to the inference um using the using the labels that um, that are provided by the already trained model that we're going to load, right? Um, yeah, so let's start off uh, by trying to predict uh, with an image, right? So we have the inference directory, and we have the horses.jpg file as well. Um, yeah, so when we do that, it downloads this um, already pre-trained model um, with all the weights, and um, it does the inference, right? And so we have in the runs in the runs directory, we'd have this horses.jpg file. Um, yeah, so as you can see. Um, from that, we, we we now have those bounding boxes, and we were able to 
detect all of the horses that are actually um yeah that are actually in our image right um yeah and so reducing the number of parameters we use um let me just run the The model again yeah since it's already downloaded it doesn't count but we have an additional experiment where we still have where we where we still have that classification um where we have those object detection in our cases since the objects that are here are horses um we have those horses detected right um so if we go back to detect.py um as a use case, um, we can actually um, save the results to a text file, right? Just by passing in um, this argument. So set.txt, and um, we're going to have a third experiment that is run, which is going to be saving that um, those coordinates that we talked about um, over on the slide. Uh, what was it? Um, yeah, so this coordinates, that x, y, uh, width and height, um, and that specific label that we talked about is now going, going to be saved um, inside of the labels file, right? Um, yeah, so this save.txt file has now given us um, this specific labels. Um, so this, this numbers, um, if we have it, um, if we split this to the right and we open the horse .jp. okay. Yeah, so we have what we have here, right? So this is the textual representation um, that we've managed to, to get from our image, right? Um, so this four are actually coordinates um, for a specific horse in our image. Right, and this seventeen is is just the the class number that that was given to the data that was used to that was used to train our model. Right, so if we go into the Google data set, um, so if you go to this Google data set that explorer. Um, you'll see this data, you'll see this data set that was used to train the model that we've just used. So there are, I, th I think, around 91 classes currently. Um, and so if we go to the 17th class, um, it should be a horse. Um, so this one, there is this class so this this horse class has been given uh the number 17 right so if we had um if we had other entities and for for, for this yeah yeah so all of this other entities all of this 91 entities um have their own number associated with them and as we go on and um as we go on and maybe try a, another image and see uh, how this works, um, we'll see that, for example, for the bus as well, we would then have another number, but similar numbers representing the the x, y, um, width, and height of uh, the specific entity in the image. Um, we would then again have another experiment that is run um, with all the labels associated. Um, yeah, so yeah, so over on the bus. Okay, so this this was this is actually good because we do not have. Uh, we now have multiple entities, not just horses like we had in this image, but we now have uh, we now have multiple classes, right? 
So if I zoom in, there is there are, there is person, there is a tie, and this there is this bigger one, this bigger entity that has been classified as a bus, right? Um, and if you go to the labels now, you'll see that you'll see that this three classes actually exist. Um, so for each people, so this type of classification is the exact one that we've talked about um, previously in our slide um, as the object detection where we're actually detecting um, individual objects. Um, in this case, we're detecting the person, the bus, the tie, and um, we're actually we're actually getting um, that specific that specific object from it um, and getting its location within the image as well. Um, yeah, and so that coordinate information and so zero is for a person and we have four people um, in our picture. Um, Twenty seven is either for the bus or the tie. Um, okay, so yeah, 27 is for the tie because um, you can see that um, the width and height are actually really small, which corresponds to the tie. Um, but here it is very big, so it is considered, it, it is most definitely for the bus, right? Um, so five is for the bus and 27 is for the tie. Um, and so you can, um, read more about the data used um, by going to the URL that I have. Um, so that is it for the second use case as well. Um, additionally, um, based on what you're trying to do and based on another type of segmentation, um that we've talked about um the instance segmentation um just on the yolo 7 repo um it is actually provided um so if you um oh yeah or actually let's try the video inference first because we might be also working um with video data right um so let's think for videos free download i think when I downloaded, yeah, so yeah, uh, let's. I don't think we have uh, a video included here, so if oh, so, it was already here. I think that was uh, yeah, so if we take it now to here, let's let's add a new folder videos and remove it here. So this does not only work. Um, with images, but with videos as well. Um, and that is because videos are just simply images, right? Um, they're just images um, stacked on top of each other, um, just moving continuously. Um, yeah, and so um, the one of the biggest advantages of using Yolo 7 is they're really, really great performance at, I think, up until around um 160 frames per second right so um that's um that's really good that, that would mean um around 160 images that would that would have that would have been stuck on the image and it would it would still really be able to detect objects um on all of those images with was really um with still um high accuracy compared to previous models. Um, yeah, so if we use the detect option and instead of the image, we go into the videos. Okay, so it's still in the image directory. And 
can also take a for this as well. Um, if we want to have each each information for each of uh, those images that we've talked about, right? For each of those images that are making up uh, that make up the video. Okay, so if we go, if we then go on to where is it? Uh, models. Norms, yeah. So experiment five would have labels of each of those frames, right? So um, in the first in the first frame, it had it, it had two objects, um, and if you really go down, I think this had around more than four hundred, uh, more more than four hundred frames. So for each frame, you would have um, those detected objects, right? So. 385. So for 385 frames, um, it had different objects that it detected. Um, um, yeah, and if you, I guess a moment. Yes, I have a, a previous question. So um, do we need to train them on the, for example, the emotions and and the logos, or it's just ready use. Mm. Okay, so it depends on the type of classification. O on the text, um, you've seen um, Tesseract being used, um, and so um, Tesseract is an, an OCR library which is specifically made for that. Um, so. If you're if you find an, a new data another data set that might um, fit your needs and you go on to retrain this model um, and then classify using that it would it, it would be able to really classify on a more broader range but um, on this specific model that I'm using um, for this demo purposes it just has those 91 classes and so um, for example, for the Lexus advertisement, um, it would be able to get the uh, car um, where it is, um, yeah, where it is, um, and yeah, for for the different types of advertisements, where the people are, uh, how the people are located, and those specific informations, but it, it is limited to those um, 91 classes that the data set has. So uh, it can't uh, detect emotions like smiling, sad face, and so. Um, no, 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 no emotions. Okay. okay. Um, yes, nothing. Okay. Am I audible? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, for the video part, like if we prefer to use a video object recognition, uh, does the position really matter? So like. To the actually on the document it stated as like only the objects like the location actually doesn't matter but while we extract like so should we just count all of all for example we we get like result of each frame right um, yeah how, how do we general generalize that into a single uh, detection um, so it would all depend. So if you can take, um, you can you can take each of the objects that actually exist within continuous frames and um, calculate like lots of things, right? Even how the objects are moving, uh, how the lo how how fast the location is changing might tell you a couple of things. Um, yeah, so it, it all depends on how you decide to actually aggregate things um, over on the labels that you get, right? Um, so what, what what kind of transformations were you thinking of? In uh, just initially? OK, I, I was thinking like uh, somehow to to count each each uh, each type, for example, each label, 
I was thinking counting, but that wouldn't make somehow uh, any sense. For example, in the first frame, if we have uh, three persons, and then in the next frame, if if we have two, like we still will have like we will consider it at like if we consider each level, we will we will have one person. We will just consider object detected is just a person, not how many, but just a person. Yeah. But yeah, but you can you can still count the number of people that are still there as well, right? Um, for example, um, which experiment was it? Uh, oh, this wasn't that. In the bus experiment, yeah. So if you go into the labels, even the initial, just um, without any transformation, what it builds on, you can count um, for each object, right? Yeah, I can. I, I, um, for for this particular example, I know we have four four people. Yeah, four people. But for the video side, like, if we start to count, like the in, for the image one, like we continue like this, we might have like hundred people, like hundred and ten people. Yeah, we, we will have a great a great number, which is some insignificant number. Yeah, yeah. Ah, for each yeah. frame. Counting it for each frame, count, counting each of um, each of the people that are each of the objects that exist in each frame, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, that wouldn't make any sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. Um, yeah, I, I do. I can't think of um, anything at the moment which which might make that useful. Um, Maybe you can you can take, different? Yeah, you can take the distances that are happening um, between each of those frames. Uh, so if like there wouldn't be and there wouldn't be like a significant um, distance between each each object over on the next frame, right? So um, if you want to take motion into consideration, um, you can do that. For example. Um, this person that that's doing parkour, it's a single entity. I think let's let's go on watch the video and um I think since we will have a better view of I think it might open here as well or not. Mm -hmm. So sorry about that. I have a couple of things open. Yeah. So we have um the bounding box here. Um and it all depends, right? So, like, relatively, um, what what do you get when you see this? Like, um, it's just one person, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is just one person. Um, that that can be like that numeric value can um, can be a feature, right? Um, if maybe if this was an ad for, um, let's say, um, uh, a tour and travel company, um, like seeing just one person maybe do um, good activities versus seeing a group of people um, do activities um, might have a different conversion rate. So just using this, um, using that number count can give you um, some different insights, right? Um, and taking another factor into consideration, maybe um, this, I, I don't know if the video has been slowed. Yeah, this this is definitely in slow-mo, but 
this is a relative this looks like a relatively slow exercise right um and so some people might not even though this is um this is not uh yeah this is definitely a high intensity exercise um it, it looks slow and um some people might be looking for something that is um maybe really more active right and so even that movement between the frames that are happening um can give you maybe more insights right so maybe a a sprint um a sprint activity uh might have a higher conversion than a than a very like than let's say maybe a marathon um so it, it would all the it would all depend based on the advertisement um and based on the type of video but it is definitely something we'd have to brainstorm and look at the various use cases to um, to get that general um, to get to get that general feeling because you have really limited amount of time and um, I think focusing on one advertisement would not be good um, for this use case. But yeah, that's definitely something uh, really interesting to look at and finding that um, general pattern that would. Um, yeah, that would give you good insights. Um, it, I know it doesn't answer your question, but uh, I, I, I hope you get, you get what I'm saying. I, I actually did. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that's that's how the videos, the video object detection works, right? Um, over on Yolo Seven. Um, yeah. So. And also, again, right out the box, I'm not uh, I'm not doing anything outside of the um, what's it? Yeah, outside of the GitHub repo. Um, yeah, there is uh, instance segmentation um, default built in. Um, it leads to lots of errors um, if you actually try to continue on. Um, with this, you'd have to uh, you'd have to go on to another branch, um, which is behind development, and have to fix a couple of things to get this to work. So um, let's uh, I think instead of checking out, here let's create a new folder, um, clone that specific branch, and. Uh, See how instance segmentation works um, over on your seven. Um, yeah, so for those that have this, the, you might end up having um, issues over on this setup. So I think if anyone wants to follow along, it would be good. Um, okay, so where am I? To? I'm not in this directory. Uh, ah, so I created it inside uh, instance segmentation. Uh, so let's see into that. And we want to clone this one again, but we want to clone into the mask branch, right? Yeah, so we have now this um, older branch, another branch checked out. They've, they've diverged, um, but this one is the one that I've found to actually work um, when it comes to the instance segmentation. Um, yeah, and so once you've checked out into the mask branch, um, Inside of the tools folder, there is um, this instance notebook, um, instance.ipymb. Um, yeah, but this requires um, Detectron 2. Um, Detectron 2 is um, an additional um, image, 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 um, um, image segmentation library that is um, used by that that is by Facebook, but um, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. But we actually need need it installed. So where was it? Yeah. Uh, so.
So if we go here, um, it did the Tetron too, and I think okay. Um, this this is actually um inside of the Google Drive for anyone that wants to find the resources there as well, or maybe wants to watch it later on. Yeah, so we, let's go on to install. So we're installing it in our virtual environment. Uh, so process and yeah, okay. So yeah, this are there is this CUDA version mismatch. So CUDA is the API um, that is used um, to interact with our GPU. Um, and so um, this version mismatch happens because um, because of PyTorch um, being being built from Yellow Yolo being built for from a different version, right? Um, and so what fixes this is, um, yes, this, uh, this, this installation. Sorry, I wasn't aiming to interrupt you, but no, rather no. I had an eye. Uh, okay, so the at the first part, we did the image, I'm sorry, the segmentic, I'm sorry, the semantic uh segmentation right oh, object detection we just we just did an object detection okay so in this case we are trying to do um instance segmentation okay but i noticed when you run the code for the horses we mm -hmm. have got like four rows and all of those five rows mm -hmm. i'm sorry and all those five rows were gave us the ID of 19 and the position of each individual horse. Doesn't yeah. that technically yeah. mean the instances are actually segmented from that picture? Um, because we have the count of the horses, we have what the ID is, which basically means horse, and we have the row, so uh, yes. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely um, the, the terms are like, all over the place um it was just using like at least one um one term implementation that i liked right so if you go back here um we're not technically yeah we're not segmenting pixel by pixel but we have those bounding boxes on each of those individual objects right on each of those individual voices which is this which is this image right here which is object detection Um, if we were doing this um, specific uh, specific pixel by pixel um, segmentation, it would be either um, a semantic segmentation or an instance segmentation. Um, so you would you would for you would definitely depending on the resource that you're seeing, you might see those them, some of them mixed around, um, but based on this specific implementation. And so we did all the detection. So is that clear? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, there is this CUDA mismatch based on the Torch version that we installed um, over on the default YOLO that we downloaded. Um, so, let's. Uh, Okay, so install the Torch version that I um, that I sent over on the meets um, so that we can install Detectron. Right. Um, yeah, so it is uninstalling the previous versions that we had to go on to install the newer versions. Um, that fixed the issue that you're going to have. Um, also, I think maybe I might not be here. Uh, okay, so 
So that has installed, um, installed it, and then we can then go on to install the Teflon too. And this should work. Mm. That should have worked. Check on to dot get. Um, okay, so. So the end, there is this um, huge mismatch of versions that actually kept happening. So I think when I copied everything, I might have. Uh, that's the version that I just installed to right? Um, hopefully this is going to work. If not, um, I think I also have like, so, yeah, so this I found to is, okay, again, it hasn't want to install, okay. So where is the other one? Um, yeah, I think it works. Um, the function installation works here. So, um, I think something maybe I want to install it. Yeah, so I think I can just uh, share this requirements.txt file, which, uh, which would have, um, so, uh, XT, uh, hmm. so there are this specific versions that have actually been installed. So, let me hmm. just the torch version should be fine, but yeah. the previous step should have worked. Um, yeah, but I think I'll, I'll just share this requirements file. Um, that my virtual environment is working on. Uh, and we can go to the, we can just go to the, what's it called? So I'll, I'll share it on Slack. Uh, six. Or resources. Uh, so this, this are all the packages that are um, inside of my virtual environment, but this actually um, works and I've gone through the debugging process already. Um, and so that's why. Um, but even after actually installing that, um, one additional thing that you'd have to do is, um, you'd have to go into PyTorch itself um, and go into this, um, app sampling dot pi file and comment out this line. Um, comment out line one hundred and fifty seven. 
um, to actually um, on this specific version of PyTorch uh, that I got the instance segmentation to work, you'd have to go on and comment this line, uh, right? And um, yeah, after you comment that line, there is this already um, instance notebook that is provided if we go to here and go to tools, um, you have this um, instance notebook, which um, handy staff instance segmentation. So yeah, um, it downloads the specific model and you just give it a, just give it the image. It uses um, OpenCV um, to read this image. Um, yeah, so yeah, at the end, you'd go on to have those, um, each of those instances segmented. And so this this goes back to Fasal's question where each pixel now is actually um, identified. We not, we not only have the bounding boxes, but we have those individual um, pixels that um, specify each of the horses that we have. Um, yeah. But I, ha I have not tried this the semantic segmentation. Um, I don't think it, it is yet implemented over on the repo. Um, but you can definitely have a look or, um, yeah, and also try out this instance segmentation um, by using videos. But yeah, it's fix this um, app sampling, uh, remove this comment um, on app sampling .py. Um, yeah, and um, just install the package I'm um, using the specific VM that I had here, and everything should be up and running um, using Yolo 7. Um, yeah, and that that is it from the segmentation. You can definitely extract lots of features from that um, and add it on to your analysis. Um, yeah, um, that's it for the demo for the segmentation. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions. Uh, Can you please share with us the specific version mm, of Pine? Yeah, this, this one. Oh, Maybe in yeah. order to reproduce the work. Yeah. It's still 3.9.12. Um, no, uh, uh, not only Python, but the, the other one that you mentioned. Mm. I think it was, uh, sorry, I was not paying attention. Yeah, uh, how you basically thought the CUDA version mismatch. Mm. Uh, that's uh, just yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, so, but yeah, it, did, it, it actually didn't work. I couldn't figure out what, what was happening here. Um, Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, but I think let let's let's actually try to figure that out. Um, I think we still have a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left, right? We can do that because um, this was fixed, and I'm not completely sure if which one did it. Links okay, so this is installing this 1.11. One one, one. Um, we can actually uh, so um, okay, torch 1.12 one um, and 0 0.13. So, uh, I... Yes, sir. No, I was just uh, thinking about maybe we can uh, do that on our own time. And there's another question. 
um, because yeah. I think there, there's a guide on how to install which and what libraries. I didn't see that before, so mm. maybe let's just you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think definitely um, requires Torch, but you have Torch successfully installed. Yeah, it is just a, it's requiring this Torch one point one three. So um, anyone facing issues over that. Um, yeah, and just to make sure to import, where is it? Um, yeah, you just need to append the path for the previous directory, just slight modifications on um, this instance notebook if you're going to do um, instance segmentation. But I, I do believe um, that just the initial object detection will give you um, at least a good number of um features to start off with uh, so to initially going on and building your first pipeline and building your first mvp um would be important using like um the various tools that you've used so just starting off with the object detection and uh, maybe going back to uh, the different types of segmentations to add a couple of features because um you do have a huge amount of data that you have to go through um yeah and yeah definitely this was a short demo um i think we've all been in a call for quite some time yeah yes i want to um i think that that's doing that but yeah i think if anyone is facing issues over on this side um you can um <clears throat> you can chat with me on slack um yeah if no one has any questions we can end it here um, and have a great rest of the day, everyone.